Now sit yourself down, please take a seat. This will take some time, I bet. And let me spin you the extringent yarn of Willoughby on the set. Now Willoughby was quite the fellow, and your pardon I now must beg. A modern day pirate, if you will. He even had a wooden leg. He lost his leg in a tragic way. It would seem that his rubber boot caught the wheel of the engine on deck, and quickly he was en route. Deterred not by this minor event, back home he hatched a plan. He would provide a needed service in response to the American ban. America had become dry, you see. He proposed to make it wet. He sent a check to RCA, and that's how Willoughby got his set. He set it up in Lower La Have. He raised a tower for the transmission. Could speak from here to Atlantic City. At dusk he could raise Great Britain. The banana fleet was assembled. All requirements had been met. It would be from here all conducted by Willoughby on the set. They had the perfect cover. They would trade in fish and salt. Loaded in Turks and Caicos Islands, but it was rum that filled the vault. The banana fleet was by design, sleek, painted gray and low. Kept out of the reach of the revenue cutters in a place they called Rum Row. Their business was undertaken beyond the 12-mile mark. Every bottle that they transshipped carried proudly Willoughby's mark. From his secret attic room, underneath the gable end, orders received and were filled of Willoughby's special blend. The dollars flowed back in buckets and landed in Ritzy's Cove. They stuffed the beds and mattress. They even filled the stove. The revenue officers knew it. They tried to spring a net, but they were all outsmarted by Willoughby on the set. Were they all in his pocket? Of this we'll never know. The liquor flowed to the states from the place they call Rum Row. The government tried to prove it, but they never posed a threat. The operation was too well orchestrated by Willoughby on the set. <laughs>